Wait, what's up, my arch means of chaos? This is your king and I, Vincent Valentine, EX Turk. And I just finished Final Fantasy IX, so I'm going to make this theory video, discussion video, because it's still fresh in my mind after I just finished the whole entire stream settings of Final Fantasy IX. And this is always a big question in the the minds of Final Fantasy fans and people like me are people who just finished the game. Period. Who and how many people did Garland play for his plan to work? Now we would have to go back we would have to go back in time and rewind the time. Now if this is if you say this is connected to Final Fantasy One, which I believe it is this would have to be through well, this would have to be a thousand or ten or tens of thousands of years for Garland to sit and plan to get strong enough to create craft his own world which is Terra so it would have to be in the fact that it would have to be in the fact that it's possible that he waited but when he started creating the genomes you know, the monkey breed people who have the strongest trance power of every race in Final Fantasy IX. So the first people he would have to play is, it would be the Genomes. Hence why Makoto told Zidane the truth about what he was supposed to be. Because he played the Genome race first. And the Genomes would also include Kuja as well. Because... Kuja is also a genome, except he was ex just like just like Zidane was supposed to be. But you know, Kuja got Zidane out of this before Z Kuja turned completely evil, which was gonna happen. So he was raised under Garland and watched under Garland's jurisdiction, only to be screwed over and told he had a short life. So even before that. Because Kuja didn't have the life like normal traditional life like Zidane kind of had, you know, because of that, it messed with Kuja. And then Kuja, and then pretty much through Kuja's actions, Kuja used King, Queen Barnet, Garnett's mother, to do all the evil stuff that she was doing. So all the evil that Queen Barney was doing was under Kuja, who was using his military, the Black Mages. So the Black Mages, Queen Barney was used by Kuja, but all under one plot to fulfill Garland's final plan. And one of the plans involved many, many wars. Just like the Garland in Final Fantasy, just like the Garland in Final Fantasy One, this one's also a warmonger, but this one has a purpose. This Garland, this older, much wiser Garland, has a plan. You know, in order to put his plan to gears, he needed to get fill Kuja's heart up with hatred enough to do all this, and then. Kuja had to fulfill Queen Barnet's greed and also create the Black Mages with short lifespan because, you know, and just lie and say that there's no oh, no way, uh, lie about the fact that there's no way that the Black Mages could actually have a long lifespan. Even ironically as it is because that's the way Garland created Kuja and Z Zidane and all the genomes. So they wouldn't threaten his power one day. Which is pretty selfish. So all of Kuja's actions are actually d a direct reflection to Garland's. So pretty much the Black Mages and Queen Barnet and those arcs were under Kuja. Which means they would be under Garland. Because Garland said Kuja could do anything he wanted to for a while until he got sick of it. And when Kuja was causing way too much destruction... Using, you know, the one eye thing that you see in the sky to control Eidolans was their summons to destroy Alexandria. There was too much destruction for Garland to ignore. Even though Garland wanted to have a bunch of wars, Garland is a calculus and planning man. He's not just only a brute and a warrior only. 
especially this older version of Garland. He's a planned calculus person, and pretty much Kuja is a, Kuja's destruction. Pretty much is causing way too much of a mass panic, and will ruin his plan. So this is when Garland steps in, thus causing things to be changed in a different way. After Zidane and their friends get the four shrines and defeat the original Archfiends of Chaos. You know, that was from the very Final Fantasy 1 verse. You know, which that's another, another, an, another, well, another character, set of characters play to get. Which is kind of funny because you think the Archfiends would learn working with Garland if set universe was in the Final Fantasy 1 verse. You would think that you you would think that the Archfiends of Chaos would learn their lesson and realize Garland only uses them and gets them killed in battle, and there's no reward after defeating Zidane and stuff like that. Considering the fact that's what he used. In fact, before he fused with all the Archfiends of Chaos and became Chaos itself, and seeing how that didn't work out, so this is actually a future Garland. That scene that that like plan did not work out, or foreseen the future and understand that plan would have never worked out. But he still used the arch means of chaos and manipulate him, even though if this is a future Garland, then why would the arch means of chaos obey Garland and still stay loyal, even though this is future Garland who probably used it? The arch means of chaos are probably future versions of the arch means of chaos. Why would they still be under the bidding, even though they follow Kuja? right after Garland's defeat because, well, Kuja takes over. Hence why Kuja goes back to being main villain status after taking care of Garland. But yes, I'd have to say the Archfiends of Chaos also got played to make Garland's plan complete. And like I said, Garland could not do this by himself. He needed the Age of Kuja, the Genomes, the Eidolans, and Black, the Black Mages, Queen Barnet's Green. So and this is him in his human body. The Archfiends of Chaos. You know, when he takes all the mask this off, he to reenact his body. one plan. Of course, that's just a city of variant costume you know, based off a concept art. To create chaos to normalize the world. Now, I know that sounds very crazy considering, you know, Garland is a warmonger, you know, to a fault. But it's not too impossible since the older Garland, the future Garland, that's what I'm going to call the future Garland, being old as he is, he'd probably have change in the way he wants to use chaos. Garland wants to use chaos, you know, and destruction and mayhem to unite the world by creating an enemy. And he became that enemy. Hey, why am I sitting on his throne? And at this point, he doesn't want care to that he's throne. dishonored. He doesn't care because... So many years have passed in Garland's time. Garland does not feel anything. No sympathy, no love, no care. And that's what he wanted to raise Kuja on in order to make sure his plan comes out real great. And the reason why, there's actually another reason why Zidane calls Garland a sad man. Because truly, Garland is a sad man. Garland would rather be hated in order to make sure all nations stay peaceful by creating war. You know, amongst the, in the background, using Kuja as the face of evil, he'd be the hidden evil behind it. And the face of evil is not always the face of evil. Remember what I told you about Idolus and Arden? You know, Idolus was made to be the face of evil for the Niflheim Empire, but it was Arden who planned and calculated, you know, years and years upon up to a thousand years, just like Garland did. Garland made Kuja pretty much be the villain he was. You know, he made Kuja the way he is. And I know that sounds a little bit off, but think of it. He would have to use a bunch of people, especially people he never met. So he would let Kuja do what he does, just because it would be within his plan. But then when Kuja slips up and does something that's not on the plan, you know, not not on the agenda, then then that's going to cause pretty much 
that's pretty much going to cause too many problems in his plan, and thus he had to dispose of Kuja. So, you know, he had to do what he had to do in order to make sure this will put a stop to all of this. But nonetheless, you know, he had to put an end to Kuja. So he was waiting for Kuja to come and attack them so Garland can have a shot. But Garland was weakened and defeated by, by Zidane and his friends. So there was no way Garland could actually beat Kuja at this point since he's weakened and defeated. Not to mention, Garland hasn't trained for a long time. So he's not as strong as Kuja. In fact, Kuja surpassed him in every way. Which I know this will trigger Garland fans out. But he has pretty much surpassed Garland. Because the old version of Garland doesn't train. He, the old version of Garland is actually a mastermind. A tactful mastermind. Pretty much think of a more magical, mystical version of Lex Luthor. That's pretty much what this new Final Fantasy Garland 9 Final Fantasy 9 Garland is. He's pretty much a renowned Garland as the original Garland was both a brute and kind of a mastermind but not as smart as the Final Fantasy 9 one. So, yes, he would have to have strangers do his bidding for him and he that's why he let Kuja do what he did until Kuja went too far then he wanted to be stop him but he got weakened, lost the battle, got weakened so Kuja was able to finish him off, but Kuja but Garland was able to tell Kuja with his last breath of life that your life is short, thus causing even more causality and destruction toward Terra. So, pretty much, even though he still got what he wanted in the end. He got Kuja mad enough to destroy the world. That, the world of Terra. You know, thus causing his ultimate plan to resurrect the God of Death. Necron. Now remember, this is only a theory, so don't take take it with a grain of salt. So this is my theory, and may the crystal be with you. Like and subscribe, and my Final Fantasy Nine uh, stream should be my, my final one should be right up below this video. So may the crystal be with you.